Greetings, freaks and folks. This is Vlad the Lad. It is finally here, the big lap of legends guide. Let's do this. So I want to start off the video with some information. If you follow my videos for a bit now, you know that I tend to not cut that much because I don't think that's a good thing to do. I don't like it very much when I see YouTube videos. It makes it hectic and unpersonal. But for the sake of information and the density, uh, having information quickly, you will see a lot of cuts in this video. The power of YouTube. Also, you might be thrown off sometimes by maybe changing the lighting or maybe even the short swap at some point because I don't know if I can make the whole video in one recording session. And also I will have to edit while I'm recording in simultaneously. So I never did this before. So please be kind to me in that regard. So why a Lab of Legends guide? Well, basically because first and foremost, there is no big Lab of Legends guide this far in YouTube. And also it was too low a frustration for you guys because I ran into a lot of frustration when I was playing the higher difficulties. Like the normal is okay, Talia is a bit harder to pull off, but if you reach the higher difficulties, it can be really frustrating and, and I want to lower this a bit for you. You know what's also lowering frustration? Clicking buttons like the subscribe button and the like button, if you like what you will see. And if you find this helpful, please consider sharing this with your friends, your grandma, your dog. They maybe also want to have a legendary run on Talia. And basically also because it took me a lot of time to put this together. I'm still a small YouTuber and every help is very much appreciated. Last thing before we start off is a big shout out to those who already wrote guides or viable, valuable information on the internet. This would be Lady Merlin from Reddit, Old Man Sense from Out of Cards, Dylan Ladd from Dot Esports, and last but not least, Silver Fuse for Mobilitics. There will be links to all these things down in the description and click there and show them some love for me because they also took a lot of time to, to put this together, I think. I read all of these and I condensed this information into a smaller package and also put my thoughts into this. Mostly what I was reading was already what I was thinking and experiencing in the Lab of Legends. And without any further ado, now let's start. So we're going to start off with some basics. The Lab of Legends is a lab mode that was introduced together with the Philios and it got updated on the 29th of March. In this update, they added uh, the Azir and the Talia and also added the uh, difficulties. And as you may tell, I have played this a lot. As you can see, I won all of the normal mode, I won the complete hard mode, and I also beat it the complete he heroic mode. And uh, yeah, I also beat it two of the legendary modes. In the Lab of Legends, we have to beat nine total AI enemies with three blocks, uh, each block with their own boss. So we, we have two normal games, one boss fight, two normal games, one boss fight, two normal games, one boss fight. And each of these have their own passive bonus. This is an overview of all the passive bonuses there are with their matchups and the passive bonuses. It goes from left to right and on the first two columns you see the normal matchups and then the right column is the boss matchup. So the first line is what I call the Thresh block, and the second is what I call the Sejuani block, and, and the third one is the Victor block. If you lose one of these matches, your whole run is completely over, you get no second chance. And this is mainly what makes it, and the randomness, the, these two things are mainly what makes it frustrating at times. We will start off with 30 HP, and the HP will be carried over during the matches. So if you lose health on the, the two matches before the boss, you will carry over the HP. And after the boss fight, if you uh, beat him, you will actually refill your health to 30. The decks are pre-built uh, depending on what champion you will choose. I will choose Riven Life for now broken, and I reformed. press play. And there you have the deck which is comprised of some cards revolved around Riven. And they will be 18 in total, so keep that in mind. You can mill yourself in this mode. This is also a big difference to the... Lab of Legends before the update, where you couldn't mill yourself or the enemy couldn't mill himself, now you actually can, so keep that in mind. Yeah, speaking of picking your actual champion, you have to pick a lot of things in this mode, so you have to do a lot of choices. First choice, of course, is what we already did. You have to choose the champion. 
Second of all, you have to choose a passive bonus, and this is maybe the most crucial and important thing in this mode, because this is a very strong effect that will then be passive for your whole matches, all of the nine matches, and you get additional passive bonuses after each boss. So after the third match and after the sixth match, you will get another passive bonus. And even though you can do these rerolls, I highly recommend you, and especially in the higher difficulties, that you will retire the run, which would be behind my camera here. Uh, you click retire and then you retire the one if you don't find what you are seeking. So you just play again and you get new passive powers. Maybe you consider this as cheating, but trust me, this lowers a lot of frustration later on the line. If you fail in round 7 or 8, which are mostly the hardest matchups, you will be very frustrated that you didn't pick a proper passive bonus at the start. And it, it's hard enough, even though you have these three rerolls, you can do this upon all of your choices, on your passive bonuses, on your cards you get in addition, on your champions you get extra, you can reroll them three times in total. So these are very valuable and uh, use them wisely. If you are curious from what passive powers you could choose from, I highly recommend the guide from Out of Cards. There will be a list from all of the passives there are, and I think they are already updated from what I can see. And if you're interested in how these passives actually match with your champion, there's a Silver Fuse guide which will show you what champion goes good with what passive. But keep in mind that these are, like besides the out of cards one, the other ones aren't uh, updated from what I can tell to the update from the 29th of March. So after choosing one of these, I'm not choosing it proper now, I just want to show it off. We will actually see all these matchups, which will be, the, the first one would be Spiders, and all the others come later down the line. And I want to lead off with the first two, at least. Uh, I don't want to spoil the whole run, because this is also what it's exciting about, <clears throat> what reward you get after the fight, right? So after you beat the Spiders, you will have to choose between three different champions. They come with two copies of themselves, and also two other cards with two copies each. So six cards in total of cards that are connected to that champion. And after you beat the Mist Raves, you will get to choose one of your existing champions with your first item. And this is what this makes really uh, exciting, this mode, where you can upgrade your existing cards in your deck. And each time you will pick one of these, you will get an additional copy into your deck. And the second reward for the Mist Raves would be to have two copies of another unit for your deck. But like I said, I won't spoil all the other matchups, what you get as a reward there. If you want to spoil yourself, you can look into the description down below. There you'll find the guide from Old Man Sense from Out of Cards, and he has written down all the rewards you get for each matchup. So after we talked about the choices you do in this mode, we actually want to talk a bit about the difficulties. With the normal mode, you will have no upgrades whatsoever for the enemy, besides the passive bonus that I showed beforehand on the overview. Then we have the first block, which is the Thrash block, and they will face the enemy with 10 HP on their Nexus. On the second block, they have 20 HP, and on the third block, they have 30 HP. And like I showed you before, you can switch the difficulties up, up here. If you switch to hard, you will actually have to face an, a bit thicker Nexus. They will have plus 5 HP, so we have 20, 20, 15 on the Thrash block. 25 on the Sejuani and 35 on the Victor block. On top of that, the bosses will have upgrades, So, but only the boss units themselves. Uh, Thresh has a plus one, plus one, where he ends up with a 4-7 body. Then we have Sejuani who has Fury, and we have Victor who starts with, with the Overwhelm keyword right away. Then we have the Heroic mode, and this is where things get really nasty, because now they will start with an extra unit on the board, and uh, they have units or they have upgrades rather themselves, the, the units, not only the bosses. And I will go over most of them. Uh, I didn't figure out all of them, I think, but uh, the vast majority. Uh, and I will show that when I'm talking about the matchups in the next step. But before we actually do that, we want to talk about the legendary modes for a second. There isn't that big step like from hard to heroic. This is the very big deal where they have the extra unit which comes in really strong sometimes. And when you face the Legendary, they will have some additional cards, which at times are annoying, but not super overpowered. But uh, what's the big difference is that they will start off with full um, spell mana. And this is something that 
you have as a passive as well, where you refill your spell mana each round. They don't refill each round, they only refill it upon match start. So they start with four mana in total. So actually the description which says they have an extra mana gem is wrong. They start with full spell mana, not with an extra mana gem. After having all the kill, let's actually talk about the special matchups. I will talk about what to watch out for with the certain cards they have in deck. Then we talk about the special tip, how you possibly beat them better, and then what you can expect on the difficulties. So for the spiders, like you saw in the picture, they will have a fleeting spider in hand every round, and they will most of the time play it. So keep in mind that they, you, uh, as a special tip, keep low the amount of spiders they have, and also consider taking very bad blocks, because they have a lot of ways to pump up their spiders. They have the Brute Awakening, they have the Frenzy Skitterer, and they have the Arachnoid Host. Now in terms of spells, you should definitely consider Vile Feast. He very much likes Vile Feast, Grass of the Undying and Withering Whale. From Heroic onwards and uh, upon Legendary, in the first round they will start with the pesky Spectre, but that's no big deal because it's ephemeral and will die because you have always stuck with the attack token. Then we have the Frenzy Skidra with a Barrier. We have the Hapless Aristocrat with Challenger. And I don't know if this is from Legendary or, or Heroic mode or not, but they do have Atrocity. I didn't see that in Normal and the Hard mode yet. Now for the Mistrave matchup, as you saw in the picture, they will, upon dying, they will shuffle more copies of Mistraves in their deck and they will find them and almost always have one in the hand. There's not, not too much to look out for. They have uh, Ravecaller and Spectral Matrons and some of the removal spells they have with spiders. My special tip is very obvious. Definitely keep some fearsome blockers because obviously mistrives are growing fast and they are fearsome. On Heroic and Legendary they will start with a Bark Beast, which is not that big of a deal because in the second round they normally attack with the first mistrave and the Doom Beast. You can just block the Doom Beast and let the mistrave through for the two damage. And also the Wraith Caller will now have plus three plus three but will be ephemeral so keep a jump blocker for the second attack and also watch out for the doom beast as it has quick attack now now for the thresh matchup they will start with the walls of helia and when the thresh levels up they will shuffle three random si champions in their deck so you definitely need to not have him uh, the level up and kill him beforehand what you should definitely watch out for is the prankster the scuttlegeist the vengeance and the ruination as my special tip, it's kind of obvious as well, you should definitely keep the whole board of the enemy empty or remove the Vaults of Helia if possible, one of these two, as they won't progress their Vaults of Helia ongoing. You could sometimes clear their board with offering bad traits uh, when you attack and maybe they take a very bad trait if you have a stronger unit, but you can remove the enemy unit on the board, you definitely should consider doing this. In terms of extra difficulty from Heroic onwards and Legendary, they will start with the Warden's Prey. So upon the first round, they will start with a two-cast champion right away because the Warden's Prey starts, round one starts, and it dies, it directly gets the unit, the last breath effect, and gets a two-mana unit on the board right away, plus the other one-cost unit he possibly plays. And in addition to that, very annoying, the Phantom Prankster has regeneration, so you need to directly deal the three damage because the Phantom Prankster can really get uh, to be a threat. And we come to the Sejuani block and we start off with the Hunters. They have as a special ability that their weakest unit will get vulnerable at the start of the round, so possibly you should consider not playing units sometimes. Also watch out for Frostbites, the Ice Veil Archer, Frost Fang Wolf, Ice Yeti, and the most... Uh, Crucial one is maybe the Wild Claw, which has Overwhelm and will challenge the uh, weakest of your units and possibly get a lot of Overwhelm damage in. So my special tip on that, keep removal for these very big units, like the Wild Claw, which has 6 HP and comes down normally on round 6 and he will right away attack with that, so keep removal for that. On Heroic and Legendary, they will start off with the Averos and Sentry. Their Omen Hark has Challenger, their Marksman has Barrier. And for some reason, I saw a Poro Herder from Legendary, but actually they don't play any Poros. That's why I don't know why I saw this inclusion, Poro Herder in Legendary, but whatever. Then we face the matchup, the Scars, and like the name says, they start with the Scar Grounds. So if you have the opportunity, remove that if you can. 
if not uh, deal with the big threats, which would be the Skarma Labrina. They are playing this. They are playing Tarkaras the Tribalas, which will ping all their units, and they play a lot of uh, yeah units that get buffed from getting damaged. And also the Skyrons obviously goes off. Plus, this matchup really loves their HP boost. I kind of already said what my special tip is. You should definitely remove the Tarkas the Tribalas. You should definitely, if you can, remove the Skygrounds, because if they don't have that, it's a pretty trash deck you play, you play against. And definitely consider removing this, the Ember Maiden, because this can be also a really big threat, pinging everything on the board by one and getting the Skygrounds off. In terms of higher difficulty, they will start off with the Unscarred Reaver. Their Wolf Rider will have Regeneration. And Scarred Thane Stefan will have Fury. And last but not least, we get to Sejuani, who has as a passive that every unit upon summoning effect will get a plus one plus one, which can be really annoying at times. You should definitely watch out for the Tusk Rider and the Fury of the North boost. They tend to use that a lot. And Frostbites, but most of them are slow speed. So sometimes you need to open attack by not get, for not getting frozen by a slow speed fr freezes. My special tip for this is that you always will see or almost always see Sejuani on round six. So keep in mind that you have removal for her at round six or any answer to protect your unit he wants to get vulnerable to and run down with her units. For Heroic and Legendary, there it becomes quickly really nasty with the weird stones, weirdings, the weird stones <laughs> they start with, which is then the 1-4 with a plus one plus one boost. So you definitely should consider removing that as fast as possible. This time the Wolf Rider will have quick attack, which is nastier as they are a 4 by 4 body with a plus 1 plus 1 with quick attack and overwhelm and for some reason they again have the poor herder in deck in legendary then we come to the probably most annoying matchup which is the foundry they will start with the hexcore foundry and you will draw two cards each round upon start or each round from that uh, plus they have a one mana discount on every card they have so you're pretty fucked at that so they have a lot of momentum and you need to be really really quickly as they also will remove your units with damage based removal also watch out for puff caps watch out for the shady character the champunk shredder and most importantly what fucked me once is karina veraza they're running this my special tip is definitely avoid drawing as you will have puff caps in your deck most of the time and if you face heroic and legendary you will have to face a Professor Von Yip, and this is extremely, extremely nasty. You, you need him to move him right away, like immediately. And to show it that this can get out of hand really quickly, just look at this image right here. This is round one with the Von Yip and uh, me staying there and being busted. In addition to that, the Sum Dredger will have a plus two attack, so it has a 6 3 body and we will face a back alley barkeeper in the legendary difficulty. Now we go over to the matchup where I probably died the most, which are the guard bots. The foundry normally gets you down a bit with the puff caps, and the bo guard bots mostly finish you off. As they will, as a passive, summon a turret each round. They will start with the 0-1 challenger, and from that on get the 1-1, the 2-1 turret on and on, until round 8, and from round 8 they will spawn T-hexes uh, every round. Definitely watch out for damage based removal again and thermal beam. They will definitely remove your big units with thermal beam. Watch out for a true shot barrage. They will almost always use it when they have seven mana. They will have quick attack units and on top of all of it, they have give it all. I tell you this because I got fucked by 8 8 overwhelm quick attack T hexes once. My special tip for this is as also a main tip for all of these matchups you have be very quick. As quicker, the quicker you are, the better it is, the lesser bots you will face. Also try to get AoE effects as the turrets up to round 7 will have 1 HP or get the 1 HP pings to ping them down. And on top of all, to all this nonsense, when you face Heroic and Legendary in this mode, they will start actually with a Heimerdinger. And they will have no mercy with you, as you can see in this picture from round 2, where I'm fucked again. Also the Rocket Hand will have plus 2 attack. The Plaza Guardian gets overwhelmed, and as you face Legendary, they will have a back LA Keeper again. And last but not least, the Victor, who is arguably possibly the easiest one to beat out of all of these, but he can be a threat as well. 
as they will have the plus one plus one for each keyword as their passive. They will have the augment package, so all the followers that have augment keyword to them will be in the deck. Watch out for elusives, and they even have Pursuit of Perfection, yes. My special tip for that is keep down the victory. For every hex core upgrade he does, he gets another keyword, and for every keyword he gets a plus one plus one plus the augment, so he gets a plus one plus two stat line for each time he is pumping himself up each round. So keep him low and kill him as fast as you can. As he already also has hard mode and everything above, he will have overwhelm and be a threat. Upon heroic and legendary, they will start with the ballistic bot and the armed gearhead will have two extra HP. So that wraps up all of the matchups there are. And now let's dive actually into some tips what you can do during your gameplay. First of all, you always start with the attack token, so you will always attack on odds, which makes champions which have uh, odd mana, so 1, 3, 5 mana, will actually be better in terms of that you can attack with them as you play them. This obviously doesn't go for the passive where you have an extra mana jam upon match start. Second thing is you have no turn timer, so you can actually take your time. You can even take a dump if you want to um, think through what you are doing next, there will be no pressure whatsoever, the AI is waiting. Maybe the most important tip is that Nexus health is key. And like I mentioned prior, you will carry over the HP until the boss, until you beat the boss. So after the third match and after the sixth match, you will refill to 30 HP. But other than that, you will keep the HP from before. Which means you should put uh, intentionally drag out games if you have heal cards in your deck. And if you dominate the round, you should actually consider uh, waiting this out and smack the opponent for lifestyle units or whatever you have to heal yourself. This tip is not so much for the seventh round where you face the foundry and puff caps. There you want to basically end the match as fast as you can to not draw more puff caps. As a third tip, or yeah, it's maybe connected also to the Nexus Health thing, you should definitely consider taking very bad traits where you have a stronger unit, maybe a 3-1 and you blocking into a 1-1. As you probably know that on the next round you will go on dominating the game possibly against spiders or anything, you definitely want to remove them beforehand. And what's very important to know in this mode, for these matches where you keep your li life for the next round, you will stay at the HP where you kill the enemy Nexus, which means you need to uh, move the lifestyle unit at the first place if you open, uh, if you attack into the last attack to kill your opponent. You need to lifesteal before you finish him off, because when you finish him off and you lifesteal afterwards, you won't get the HP. Same goes for spells and everything else, so use it before you actually smack the enemy down. But this obviously also goes for the other way around, so you will save HP if you kill the Nexus off before the enemy gets any damage to your Nexus afterwards. I don't know if it's a general rule, but by the way, faced from my experience when I played against the AI, if you pass, he plays something and you pass again, he mostly, most of the time, will open attack with all that he has, even though he could play more. He is uh, sometimes forced to attack you right away, so keep that in mind and maybe use this to uh, navigate around anything. And the last tip for being in the game against boss fights, you will most of the time face the boss when they have the mana, so they will almost always play Thresh on 5, Sejuani on 6 and Victor on 4. I have seen and not playing this in very rare scenarios, but this is the happens the vast of the majority the vast majority of the time. And last but not least, we come to some additional or general tips I have for you. Number one tip, tempo is king. If you have very low mana units and spells, you are more likely to win the game. So cheap cards, extra mana effects, or any sort of discount will most of the time win you the game, so watch out for those passives to get them, and also to choose the upgrades where you get discounts on certain cards. Second general tip, if you have a very slow champion to win with, like Heimerdinger or Talia, consider concentrating on your second champion, which you get after the spider fight. And they could possibly get a champion that's uh, faster, and you should consider pumping this dude up instead of your main champion. The third tip could be a bit obvious, but look for synergies. Like, for example, if you have Brom with the grid passive, where the attack goes up to the health, you automatically have a 5-5 Brom, and this is a threat in itself, which can all automatically win you the game. And a second example would be Riven, for example. I have a picture for you here where I won with her with the plus one, plus one for each keyword you have 
uh, passive and she obviously her fragments get you yeah and her blade as well gives you keywords so you can very easily win with that now if you're in doubt what to pick if you should pick the better card or the heal card most of the time the heal card is the better way to go even if it's a bad card it can be the difference between life and death and last but not least you should consider upgrading your upgraded cards which are already um, strong and you have a lot of copies in it in deck because every time you choose one card with another upgrade that has already an upgrade you will get an extra copy of that so you can potentially get six, six copies of the same card with four boosts and they can be nuts so by adding more copies of this in your into your deck you get the better chance of drawing them and most of the time uh, which would be a last tip you should definitely consider aggressively mulligan for these upgraded cards because those are which will win you the game the uh, enemy isn't playing fair on legendary so you shouldn't either as a little bonus content here you can see some matchups i did with other champions where be it heroic and legendary maybe it inspires you a bit to know what to go for with your upgrades and this last picture shows very well how quote unquote cheating your first uh, passive ability isn't uh helping you to ultimately win the game is this picture right here where I was having my Brom super pumped up and I actually could have won easily the last fight against the victor but I ended up not drawing him for until round seven even though I full mulliganed for him and I had five copies of him in the deck so as you can see randomness can actually kill you or cost you the game and maybe you should consider getting a second win condition and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the moment where it's your part to get active. Get into some lap of legends and get legendary. Also, let me know uh, what you thought of the uh, of this video, of this guide down in the comments below. Uh, consider helping me out if you liked it. Also, let me know if I forgot something. Maybe there is any tip you uh, have in, yeah, in the back for me and the other guys. Uh, let's discuss a bit in the comment section. And also let me know if there's any champion you want to see on the uh, legendary level I have still open. I won't play Talia, I will leave that for another time because she is the most stressful to be honest. But for the other ones, um, maybe you can start a vote or anything in the comments down below um, what champion you want to see and I will play it in the video later online. If you don't want to wait and you want to check out more Lab of Legends content, I already played Talia in normal mode up there in the eye. If you click there, you can do the video. And that's everything I've got for you. I'm very happy that I finally did this video because uh, I had this on my mind for some time now. As I said, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like that. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys very much for everything you do for this channel. I'm uh, very grateful. And uh, yeah, I wish you a wonderful day. And I'll see you in two days from now. Stay legendary. Let out.